Hello again. Um, I'm going to talk about diagnosis. Clearly that is important, but strangely it is much less important for orthotropics than it is for orthodontics. The reason is simple. We're not concerned so much which or where things are, but really we need to know what the potential for improvement is. Um, this will depend very largely on the age of the patient. Up until eight, you really can achieve almost anything, um, except with a few very rare um, and severe conditions. After that, it becomes progressively more difficult to create change. And after the age of 25, you're really reduced to a few millimetres. However, um, with the average age, and I prefer to see my children before the age of eight, you should be able to give them a good diagnosis um, with a relatively simple examination. Now, the first thing you need to do is assess the muscle tone. I usually have done most of my diagnosis by the time the patient has walked in, say, five yards into the room. And by the time they sat down, I've probably worked out what I'm going to do. Um, it takes experience to do that, but it is no more complex than that. I think many orthotropists are accused of sloppy diagnosis because um, uh, people who attend the four-year training watch me diagnose um, a case by looking at them and saying what I think should be done, very often without the patient even opening their mouth. And they think that must be wrong. But in actual fact, you don't need much more information than that. Um, there's no point in measuring where the teeth are because you're going to be moving them. You can also move the jaws, so they're not of a great relevance either. Um, now, apart from, what, about 4% of patients who actually have a genetic disorder, I think every other patient is um, perfectly able to correct their total malocclusion. Um, and I mean, create an almost ideal result. Um, now, other cases are more variable, and you do need to assess the, the position of the tongue and the lips. You can usually see that at a glance. Um, the tongue you can diagnose even without the patient opening their mouth because, of course, what the tongue does has an effect on the shape of the face, particularly if it's on the palate. They will have big, wide smile and good um, areas around the cheek line. Um, but um, you do need to take a few measurements. The one I take primarily is the indicator line. Now this, to many people, is a very improbable line. I just measure from the tip of the nose to the tip of the front teeth. I have a little tool that I can do this with, which is available if you want to buy one. Um, but an ordinary ruler is just as good. And uh, the measurement should um, be about 38 millimetres for a man and about 36 for a woman. And that should be set more or less from the age of a little bit over puberty for their whole life. It will only increase if their posture is wrong. If they don't keep their mouth shut or their tongue and their palate, then it will lengthen. And I have found it a really surprisingly accurate measurement to measure the severity of any malocclusion. Just take the indicator line and if it is high, you will have a severe malocclusion. If it is low, you'll have a fairly simple malocclusion. Now, um, there are other factors that you do need to measure. Um, in particular, you need to measure the, what we call the lower indicator line. That is nearly the distance from the tip of the lower incisor to the underneath of the chin. 
sounds again very casual, but you'll be surprised how accurate it is. It should be about two millimeters less than the upper indicator line. Um, but it will vary, especially if you have a deep bite. For instance, deep bites will have very increased lower indicator lines, showing that the problem is just a question of over eruption of the lower teeth. Um, they also tilt back, of course. Um, but uh, you need to take a few other measurements, um, such as the lip seal. Now, you don't really need a ruler to do this. I just ask the patient to count. If their mouth is open in between the letters, then you can be sure that they have an open mouth posture um, because in between each syllable you will tend to go to the rest position. But as far as x-rays are concerned, I usually take intraoral x-rays if they're in their 10, 11, 12. But there's no point in taking dental x-rays if they're much younger than that because the teeth will be exfoliating anyway. I don't take profile x-rays at all these days. I used to for doing research, but they are absolutely no use for forecasting growth. So you can tell that by looking at the face and in particular, the muscle tone. Um, but uh, it's certainly, I have found that they are also really fairly inadequate for telling you what actually happens. Because, of course, um, bones don't grow by movement. They grow by peripheral change. Anyway, um, that is the procedure I use for diagnosis. And I think you will find it helpful.